following on the wall. Bluey coming here. He'll get it through the front line offense and the carry it towards the goal. Beats one more. Can he get it through? Everybody gets oh, it. Oh, wow. And puts it in himself. One second remaining. They've got to keep it up and in the air. It's over to the side. Classics looks and he will be able to pop it a bit, but a little bit low on boost. Crepe G now. Oh, it's dangerous. Here comes Drippa to put it in and they get the buzzer beater. I love the smell of burning rubber and goal explosions in the afternoon. Welcome to Esports in 30, where today we're fueling up to talk about all the insane amount of ridiculous goals scored this pack past weekend in the RLCS. I'm Brody, and this is Nick. And between us, we maybe have a brain capable of breaking this all down. What do you think? It's like 60-40 for me? 60-40? You know what? I'll take that. But that's still not nearly enough smarts to give you a full rundown. While we call up a galaxy brain to grace us mere mortals with his knowledge, join me as I stare slack-jawed at these highlights. Going for a 30, does get it by the third defender. Great solo plays. Illusion off the ceiling, going for it, and left Fight. came out of nowhere. Memory finishes it off. Now a chance for Goats and an epic save, but a follow-up, Illusion tying it up. From G2, it seems like they just won't let up a mistake. Oh, oh, oh J naps. G2, the freestyle coming out, and J naps. Now game three. Ghost one away. An illusion what? dumps another one in. One second remaining. They've got to keep it up and in the air. It's over to the side. Classics looks and he will be able to pop it a bit, but a little bit low on boost. Crepe G now. Oh, it's dangerous. Backboard. Here comes Drippa to put it in, and they get the buzzer beater. Gimmick up for this, but it is played away by Sipical. Torment up for this on the backboard. He has a second yep. touch. Does he have a third? He does. Torment triple tap into the net. Sipical. Has an open. Oh, yes, he bumped him. Bump. <laughs> and it's one to nothing. Space Station, don't stop coming. Pass over to Sipical. He's got his man off the post. Matthew shot. Squishy AXP. gets there. AXP finishes. We actually saw Justin bump Fireburner on accident. And that's why Fireburner completely missed the hit on that one. And Garrett. Wow. Garrett G. This, this was a sensational play. Look at Garrett. Getting his flip reset, waiting till the end, immediately wow. jumping and pushing it. And a good save there by Chicago as well. Needed to see them step up. Justin almost making the entire team miss. He does <laughs> it! And he scores! Justin is incredible! So yeah, NRG are freaks at this game, and with that win over G2, are now sitting alone and away in first. G2 and C9 eat their first losses and are in second, while Space Station and Ghost pick up some much needed wins to end up sitting in a playoff spot, at least for now. Sadly, this means that Splice is officially the first team headed for relegation. Now there's only one more week of play left, and with so much to sort through, we're welcoming back the man who died on the Mel Sports Hill with me. It's Michael Achieves Williams. <laughs> yes. What's up, dude? <laughs> Uh, I'm back. It was it was a great hill to die on, Leaf. So mm -hmm. I was totally with you. How yeah, are you guys? Well, I'm looking forward to, to more uh, uh, bad predictions, I suppose, with you at some point. Uh, <laughs> but why don't we dive into why don't we dive into NA first though, um, and talk about NRG because they're really really good. Yes, uh, NRG. <laughs> they I would just like to say before it all started, I called it. You know, they're gonna go seven and zero, and now they've got to get through Rogue and Cloud Nine to prove it. So they are definitely looking like monsters. Garrett's making big plays. Justin's making big plays. Fireburners with the challenge game and not mm -hmm. letting anything past him. They're they're on point right now. Uh, it seems like a lot, though, throughout uh, this energy run. And I mean, we saw over in Europe how hard it is to go undefeated with Vitality actually losing their first game, which we're mm -hmm. going to get to in a second. But when it comes to NRG, they do rely a lot on Justin. We saw Garrett with some pretty sick goals. But uh, is that just the system that they like to use right now? And do you think that <laughs> Justin is their system? Just, Justin is the system, <laughs> and he makes reality what he chooses it to be. Yes, that was a, a quality meme, well, and uh, I think, yes, there is a lot of uh, reliance on Justin, of course, but that's just because he's so mechanically gifted that he really can do kind of whatever he wants. He's very good at hiding his intentions and what he wants to do with the ball, and that's why he's so good at making a lot of big solo plays. There's a lot of mm -hmm. value in him being able to play upfield, because Garrett and Fireburner will just get him the ball and he'll do something with it. And even if he doesn't do anything with it, he's just gonna rotate back, he's gonna make the stop, he's gonna let Garrett G and Fireburner do whatever they want on offense, and then they'll just get the ball right back because Justin will be the first guy to rotate back. And then he'll do another crazy air dribble mm -hmm. and he'll just beat everybody. So yeah, there's a lot riding on Justin on is, that team, but he's good enough to do it. Is this gonna be useful though once they face up against teams like Vitality over in the European region? Are those solo plays still going to be viable? 
It's, uh, I mean, that's a very interesting question because uh, Vitaly kind of had the same thing going for them. Scrub Killer yeah. tends to do a lot of that. And so it, it really does come down to how well you can shut down those players and get the ball off them. So will it help? Uh, maybe. <laughs> you you kind of have to see the matchup play up one time before you can really figure it out because they've never played each other before. So mm -hmm. not sure. Well, we will eventually soon. Land's not too far off. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about a team now that, like we said in the past, Brody and I are really high on. And their, this week for them was a mm. roller coaster. SSG, they, yeah. uh, their season was pretty well dead when they lost to Ghost. And then they saved it by defeating Cloud9. So uh, talk to us about SSG. And are they potentially like now an upset team heading into playoffs? I think Space Station, since the start of, of RLCS, and even going back to right before with DreamHack Leipzig, you know, mm -hmm. they were really kind of that dark horse team in, in the North American region. Certainly the strongest team out of the rival series. And yeah, the loss to Ghost was, was rough, but uh, we talked about him last time I was here. Aleutian actually played out of his mind last week and got Ghost two wins. So mm -hmm. Space Station Gaming, they've been close to winning series off top teams all season long five games against G2 and, and beating Evil Geniuses 3-0. It's, it's Space Station, it feels like a very hot and cold team. If they're hitting shots, reciprocals on form, everything's going to go into the back of the net and they're going to win. But yeah. it's just sometimes they beat themselves more than anything. Well, this is the thing. We've seen bubble level teams before, you know, uh, have these uh, really good performances and then uh, but now of course we've, we've seen these guys come for the rivals they've proven themselves to get into the RLCS but are they going to be that same situation where like they just kind of shine for a few months and then they're they're out of the picture again uh, I don't know that's uh, do they have that staying assuming... power I think yes, because their biggest problem currently is, again, the shooting accuracy, and that yeah. comes with time. If they're able to avoid relegation, come back for next season of RLCS, during the offseason, all of that's going to be improved, and it'll get better and better, and they'll really be a strong contender in North America, because apart from NRG, they've hung up pretty well with every single team they've played against so far. Now, uh, there, there's a team, though, that wasn't hanging too well this past weekend. I'm sure they actually want to probably erase this whole weekend. Cloud9. Yes. What happened? They, they lost to uh, SSG, and then they also lost to rival series teams and the DreamHack qualifiers. Yeah. So it was a, a horrible weekend all around for Cloud9. Yeah, Cloud9 historically has unfortunately had just one week where it everything just goes horribly horribly wrong and, and they just get beat and apparently it's been week four it was week four last year in rlcs as well That's so true. the rival series teams they they like to beat cloud nine every now and again because FlyQuest took them down mm -hmm. last year this year space station gaming the dreamhack qualifiers i mean i think you might be able to pace that one up to cloud nine assuming they're gonna be invited and not really having a stake in it but yeah. uh tough to say well Oh, I was I was questioning that too. I'm like, I wonder if they saw, okay, oh, NRGs in these qualifiers, we don't need to try. They're going to win, which means we're going to get a spot in uh, RLCS. That was that. It was, <laughs> that it was, was like it was plan. like a spot from God, right? Like the yeah. death yeah. machine <laughs> spot. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you can come to. Yeah. R relating to the qualifiers, actually, one thing that Brody and I were talking about is that this season of RLCS feels unique in pairing with the DreamHack circuit because the qualifiers for these events are happening simultaneously with the RLCS, which isn't yeah. something that's necessarily happened not in the past. Not usually separate. And that kind of gives us an interesting window into how the existing teams in their current form stack up against RLRS teams. Do you find that that changes sort of your week-to-week -week analysis of like, oh man, we saw, you know, for example, SSG, they won the qualifier, and then over mm. in Europe, for example, like Complexity beat some really good teams. Does that change how you kind of go into your analysis week-to-week? It certainly can sometimes because you, you have to go back and watch those games and be like, okay, why did they lose to this team that yeah. you think theoretically they should have beat? And if you see a similarity for why a team is losing in the RLCS versus rival series teams, then you'll be like, okay, there's a clear issue here with this team. But uh, in terms of the Cloud9 one, it, it <laughs> they just lose to a team sometimes, man. It, <laughs> it just, it, it's a Cloud9 trademark. <laughs> You yes, <laughs> they'll just throw the ball into the corner. They'll have no boost. They're not going to get anything done on offense. And then everyone's going to go back to their day and be like, hey, we beat Cloud9. And then Cloud9 is going to go to that tournament and they're going to smack them into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a chip on their shoulder after that yeah, one. That's true, right? You think you had a chance. Nah, nah, nah. Um, well, let's move on to uh, Ghost. Uh, Ghost finally got some uh, some wins. They were sitting 0-4 uh, in league play for the first three weeks. Week 4 got them two wins uh, against SSG and uh, Rogue. Um, are we seeing an, an upswing or was this just kind of they had matchups that were uh, you know, not as tough uh, as Lethemir was saying. 
Well, Ghost had some awesome passing this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, uh, they beat Space Station Gaming, who I think is a pretty solid contender for a fourth, maybe even a third place spot if they're on point all season long. I think they're that good. And, and Ghost definitely showed this week what they're capable of. A lot of great passing, Illusion setting up plays, Memory and Lethemir able mm -hmm. to follow through and get great offense going. Ghost uh, showed the potential and it's really on them to finish strong and bring that same level of, of vision and, and synergy back for week five if they want to continue to be successful. Because still, the first three weeks were not pretty and you can be like, yes, you played well one week, but you got to do it week in and week out. Mm -hmm. So one of the teams that we've talked about kind of maybe on the bubble, maybe not, maybe in the top was G2. And much like SSG had kind of an up and down week, they smashed Splice and then yep. they got smashed by NRG. <laughs> and I saw some interesting comments about how saying how maybe JNAPS is overextending a bit too much on offense and that's leading Rizzo out to dry a bit in a lot of situations. So is that something that they can potentially clean up to make a challenge again into that top two spot? Or is, do they have what it takes to beat Cloud9 on a good day? Uh, do I think they have what it takes to beat Cloud9 on a good day? Absolutely. G2 definitely can beat the best teams in the world when they're on point. I mean, you saw it even back with Grenovi when they won E-League in 2018. Mm -hmm. There we go. I had to get all the years right. But uh, they're definitely a strong team. Chicago and JNAP, sure, maybe they press a little too hard, but that's purely on Rizzo. If that's how that team chooses to play, then Rizzo needs to be able to be that strong third back. Because you, you see that same situation happen all the time with Justin on NRG. Garrett G and Fireburner press a little bit too hard, and Justin's all alone on the backfield, and he makes a big stop. So mm -hmm. if you want to be the best team in the world, you got to be willing to take risks. And whoever your third man back is needs to be able to cover those up you can't always rely on someone being able to have your back it's can you make the big play Rizzo does sometimes Rizzo doesn't sometimes mm -hmm. but that's how it goes with every player in the RLCS now we're almost out of time for NA but I want to uh, touch on EG uh, I think we missed him the last few weeks talking about them EG still looking a little bit shaky I mean we they had drip a come over to be that star power uh, from OCE um, to now try to shine in NA but he hadn't found his footing last week it looked like he was a little bit better on the field but I'm just wondering where you think each of these players need to be to make sure that this um, this team works. Well, because I had a thought of how Evil Geniuses was going to look versus Splice. It was maybe if they continue to have that third man a little bit too far forward, which is what I was yeah. talking about in the previous weeks of RLCS, they might actually have some success because Splice hasn't had the strongest defense. In fact, the league lowest. So it brought them to a nice clean 3-0 win. But uh, at this point, they're playing Ghost. And... and Ghost, in, if they bring back what they did in week four, they're going to have to be able to cut down a lot of those passes and, and understand what they're trying to do with the ball, which is, I don't know if that's possible, just because I think which Ghost is. were very much, you know, hey, here we go. <laughs> There's a guy there, cool. And they were sort of piecing it together as, it as went, they yeah. went, it felt. It wasn't like, all right, get the ball to me, we'll give it right back, you know, it was kind of just, I need to make a touch here and I can get it to a teammate, and and Evil Geniuses, it's uh, it's all on Drippe on that defensive line, because mm -hmm. a lot of times he's the guy on the net, and he needs to be able to understand that pass coming from the side out to the middle, and be able to cut down that passing lane, otherwise Evil Geniuses is going to have a rough go. Mm -hmm. Alright, we uh, don't need to talk about Splice, so geez, I think that's enough <laughs> North America for now, the playoff picture is even more complex in Europe, so we got to have you say around for that but before we dive in we here's some highlights of what went down Plot following on the wall, Bluey coming here. He'll get it through the front line offense and to carry it towards the goal. Beats one more, can he get it through? Everybody gets oh, it Oh, wow! Man puts it in himself. Anyone's ball game as Bluey puts it onto the backboard. Can he be the hero one last time? Puts Alpha. Up for Alpha, puts yes. it in and through. <laughs> they keep on going, Alpha advancing down. A nice flick into this one will be good. What a play. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie there. 350, a nice shot from Ronicky and in a wonderful infield pass back and towards the goals. This one just in. No, it's off the oh, ball. He's what? Help. Can scrub, get it. No, it's through him. And now Cassio and Tadpole. Ronicky gonna work this one all the way Cassio. back down the field. And they've got the lead. Waste more time off the clock. <laughs> Fruity, a nice catch. Flipping it around. Farah's there off the post. Oh, Fruity, Fruity gets around. He scores. A lot now. 
high off the backboard. Demo opens it up. Tigre off the crossbar. It goes in. You feel like you picked up right where you left off in game number one. Still, great pressure out of the midfield from the Bricks, but execution from Barcelona. So they keep the scoreline 2 0. Another demo. Bluey goes oh. under. <laughs> big boy, Bluey. Big and big plays. From Violent Panda out to the middle. Chance for Cassio. Double tap. Upper 90. Fantastic mechanical skill. Ooh. Enough triple trouble with these double hits and these reads off the backboard. Ronnie can't get the challenge. Just set. Going off the ceiling. Oh. Ceiling shot. Just set. Ooh. What a play coming in right away. Any boost all the way up to the ceiling. That's how fast he was able to get to the oh. ball. It was a week of upsets in Europe to be sure. Despite the loss, Vitality is locked into the playoffs, but look at that. Two wins each means PSG and Triple Trouble are right on their rear. As for the rest of the table, it's basically a three horse race for the final playoff spot between Dig, Bricks, and Mouse. And Chiefs, let's get right into the biggest uh, story of EU this week. Triple Trouble, they took out Vitality, that is nuts. Yes, Casio was out of his mind on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I was watching it and I was like, oh my goodness, what is this man doing? Because sometimes there was one goal I remember where he was like driving in front. He had two uh, attacking players right in front of him. The ball is rolling onto his goal line and he just hits the brakes. And I'm like, oh my goodness. What kind of man would make that play? <laughs> and then both the guys miss it and he drove up the other end of the field and scored it. And I was like, what? So just Casio, on something else. total beast Sunday. Well, I mean, it wasn't just it wasn't just you know Cassio. I mean, like that no. whole team was stepping up too. Like we saw, you know, even Ronicky popping off as well. Yeah, and, and I mean the uh, the kind of the irony for uh, for this show in terms of the triple trouble is that uh, you were so emphatic in saying they're not a playoff team. <laughs> and honestly, we can't blame you at all because who could have seen this coming? Not yeah. only are they now a playoff team, there are scenarios where they finish second in the league. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, is is this possible? Like, other than Casio, I mean, what is happening with this team? <laughs> Yo, man, you got me. I don't know either. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think all of them were playing great Rocket League. I think Casio was probably the biggest promoter, just for me personally, mm -hmm. because it felt like he was winning a lot of challenges, getting the ball going back yeah. the other way so many times, getting chances for Tadpole and Ron and Keed to be successful. And I think that was the biggest key to their victory last Sunday. So coming into this Sunday, they've got one match against Barcelona, and they're going to need that same quality challenge play, yeah. especially against a team like Barcelona, because, you know, they're another team very similar to, to yeah. Cloud9 and Justin and, and those individual playmaking efforts that can come out of pretty much anybody on that team. Mm -hmm. Do you think that maybe... Uh the Vitality maybe slept on Triple Trouble a little bit because, you know, they were looking so confident. And although Gregan has told us before in the past that, like, you know, he keeps the guys really focused and into it, they, maybe there was some element of, you know, sleeping on this team? Yeah. I'm definitely with you on that one. Mm -hmm. I, I Vitality, just knowing what I know about some of those players, absolutely. Yeah. It's a team that, that can just be like, nah, we've got it. And you can be as focused as you want, but there's still a part of you that's, you know, not giving enough credit to your opposition. And, and Triple Trouble mm -hmm. made him pay for it, I think. Uh, anyways, you, br you brought up uh, Barcelona, so why don't we talk about them for a bit. Um, uh, they got their wins over uh, Mouse and Bricks, a 3-0 uh, on Bricks. Uh, FCB looking pretty strong. I, I think they had a bit of a weak period. I think it was week three um, where they kind of just looked like everything fell apart. Yeah, week two was the so. perfect or week, period. Yeah, yeah. So is is that, yeah, week two. So is is this like the same situation as Cloud9 since we compare them uh, to Cloud9 so much where they're going to have that one off week? Uh, I don't think so because they played Vitality on that week where That's they got true. perfect swept and Vitality was going to 3-0 sweep anybody <laughs> with a perfect yeah. series that week. And week number three, they ran into TSM, who historically has been a very stingy team on defense, very good at challenging the ball and understanding what they need to do. And even still, Barcelona almost pulled out that win in week number three. And uh, what was it? Week number four, they just played PSG. And PSG mm -hmm. was also lights out <laughs> yep. this past week, which was, was also a very pleasant surprise, I will say, because sure I've always wanted well. PSG to be successful. But Barcelona, they also had the 3 0 sweep versus the Bricks. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's hit or miss with them, just like Cloud9. Are they on or not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're hitting on all the teams we want to talk about because next up, <laughs> PSG, they stepped in up a huge way. Fruity was popping, Chassette popping with wave dash, upside down, ceiling <laughs> reverse shots. <laughs> they now pretty well have almost 100% playoff chance after beating Miles and TSM and maybe living up to that desperate urge within you to get those wins. Uh, talk to us about PSG heading into the playoffs here. 
PSG all season long, uh, coming into the season, you know, it's like, how do they put 300 plus shots on the board and then have like a 15 to 20 percent shooting right. percentage? You know? <laughs> Why are they not good? Well, this season they're putting balls in the back of the net and they're near the top of the standing. So well done. It PSG. Just, it just it, came it, down to scoring goals. I mean, that's it, how you win the Rocket League. Scoring goals, the opposition just, is good in Rocket League. It's just the, the team has been so good at generating scoring opportunities mm. because they they led the league in shots, uh, shots total shots in season yeah. six of our yes, and they barely scraped through. And now to see them have the same level of pressure and Farah and all of them being able to get that accuracy refined and really square it and put it into the top of the net is what has made them a very dangerous team. Mm -hmm. I, I think for, for me, the, the the greatest thing was when we interviewed um, Fruity and I, you know, I had to ask him about the, you know, the reverse sweeps. It's it just a huge thing with PSG. <laughs> and, and I said, is it was it at the back of your mind, you know, once an opponent got a win, like, uh oh, it's about to happen again. He just said, no, I didn't even think about it. And I think that's such a, a huge thing for PSG right now is just to, to not even worry about any of that past history. A good mindset definitely helps any mm -hmm. team. And if PSG keeps playing like they did week four, week three, despite the loss to Triple Trouble in week three, we'll skip past that because uh, that was a reverse sweep. But yeah, if if you're, it's what we call, you know, momentum a lot of times in Rocket League. Mm -hmm. You're feeling good, you play good. And that's how it works a lot of the time. Uh, let's turn our attention from the yeah, top of the table basically to the, biggest the star here. ridiculous dog pile that's at the bottom of the table here. <laughs> Bricks, Mouse, Dig, no wins among them this week. Uh, not a single one happening, and no. they're all fighting to avoid relegation. Next week, Dig plays TSM and the Bricks, Miles plays Vitality, and Bricks plays D TSM and Dig. So certainly some incredibly important and difficult matchups coming up. Uh, relegation picture, what do you, what do you got? <sighs> Rude, for one. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think Dignitas definitely goes to relegation. And I think mm. it's probably going to be Maus. I think the Bricks can can squeak out that win, and there's no way Maus beats Vitality. So I have Dignitas and Maus down in the relegation tournament. It's it's just so wild, right? Like, wild to think that the last two, uh, like, major land winners from are, are sitting in the relegation potential spots right now. Well, the bricks, it's been a... <laughs> a ride. <laughs> it's been a ride. His speed's been okay, and he really hasn't done too poorly, but he's just still not fully prepared on defense, it feels mm -hmm. like, a lot of times, because very similar to other teams we've talked about, you know, they leave speed in a one-on-two in a one or a tough one-on-one. -on -one. You just can't make the big stop a lot of times to buy enough time, and that uh, has resulted in, you know, the bricks mm -hmm. being the worst defense in the European RLCS currently allowing over two goals a game so yeah do you think that's it's causing high. do you think that's causing you know uh, Kuxir to have to stay back a bit more rather than put himself on offense where we know he can put balls in the net well I don't think it's a bad thing because the dynamic of of the bricks you know it's very much Kuxir will 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 be forward. Mystic will have to mm -hmm. make a, a play and support behind him, win a challenge, get the ball going the other way. Mystic's very good at that type of thing. And him and Cooksear together uh, can generate a lot of quality offense. And, and that team really shines when speed is allowed to be that strong third man and come up mm -hmm. and, and find the ball into the back of the net. But the team really just does struggle on defense sometimes. And do I think it should result in Cooksear being in the net a little bit more? I don't know. I think you need to bring speed up to the level of everybody else before you say, all right, let's fix or change how we do bring things. Bring speed up to speed? Bring speed Ooh. up to speed. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have that No, one. don't. <laughs> We're erasing that. <laughs> so in the middle of the picture right now, we've got TSM. They lost 3-1 to PSG, but mm. they're still right in the middle of that kind of like upper middle playoff fight. Uh, Mets and I, I met have been having some pretty good seasons for themselves, but with heading into this final week, what weaknesses did you see that maybe PSG exploited that TSM can show up to guarantee that they have a really strong final week here? Man, well, again, PSG was having a lot of great pressure, great mm -hmm. challenges, and that's still sometimes the biggest thing for PS or TSM. Excuse me, they will get trapped under their own half every now and again, and uh, PSG was able to capitalize a lot on that. And that's because TSM always feels very willing to just let you bring that ball to them before they'll be forced to go and challenge you. They'll always try and wait for a quality challenge, and PSG had a lot of awesome plays. Uh, this weekend so perhaps that uh, willingness to commit to a more passive approach mm -hmm. on defense could have been their downfall versus uh, PSG 
Um, I guess we may as well just get your thoughts on Vitality right now and just, you know, uh, you know, they, again, lost to Triple Trouble. Is this just proving the European region is uh, extremely in-depth or inconsistent? <laughs> Both. <laughs> yeah, right. I think Fruity also agreed like, with that. It feels like, you know, we we all predict the same things in North America because we understand what they're going to do. Yeah. The teams go out there and do that. We, we walk into Europe every week and we're like, well, give me five, ten minutes to think all this stuff out real quick. And, and, and then even you still, still roll a dice. <laughs> still, at the end of the day, you're like, well, I think they're just going to be a little bit better today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Europe, there's definitely depth. You cannot disagree with that. There's a lot of talent across a lot of different teams. It's a little bit top heavy in North America sometimes, mm -hmm. or most of the time, or now. Mm -hmm. But uh, Europe definitely has plenty of depth, but also, you know, like Vitality, they came out there and they got slapped. And, you know, that's the inconsistency is how can Vitality look like they can 3 0 perfect sweep any team in the world? for three weeks straight and then just come out here and straight tank in week four. I mean, yeah, it's uh, EU is is nuts, uh, but it's not over yet. But we are at a time for today. Chiefs and man, that's all the time. Uh, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I'm sure we'll be back to making some incorrect predictions this weekend. I'll see you there. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Have a good one. All right, Nick, we have just a couple minutes left here, so why don't we spend it chatting about the biggest news I think Rocket League has uh, ever had. They just got bought by Epic Games. Sonics is now under the Epic yeah, family. This is absolutely huge news, and understandably, a lot of pros and a lot of community members and a lot of pundits from other esports had yeah. opinions on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we look at them? Here's a few reactions um, from the news, uh, some positive, some negative, and some memes. Uh, starting off uh, with Freaky, some uh, much like him. We're a little uh, unhappy with this news. as. He just said, oh, God, no, please, no, for God's sake, no, 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 no. Is that an <laughs> office reference? Yeah, right, right just no. Um, and with Gregan uh, was on the other side, there was uh, some people to keep it chill and positive as Gregan offered some perspective on the news. I'm frustrated at the Rocket League community for how many irrational and assumptive conclusions people are making about Epic and what they plan to do with Cyanix and RL. Memes, fine, whatever. It's the internet. Let them off. Let's give it time and see what happens. This is a pretty fair reaction, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, but people outside Rocket League were excited, like Golden Boy, who tweeted, Whoa, this is big news. I wonder if Rocket League will continue to be offered on Steam or only EGS. That's a big question here. Happy for the Kurat Psionics. I'll never forget hosting the first Nosgoth stream, uh, and they share with me this little game called Rocket League. Time flies. Yeah, and Golden Boy's been around with a lot of games, so I if he's feeling Boy. positive about this, it's probably a good sign. Yeah, uh, and of course, uh, Justin just popped on and asked for a follow back from Epic because, you know, everything's an opportunity for clout, I suppose. Yeah, and I want to start just addressing. <laughs> This topic because it's okay. totally understandable for the pros and the other community members to be the ones who are the most concerned about this. Yeah. Since it it's is their career. It's their career, it's their livelihood, and there's a lot of unknown here. And Epic has come out and said there's a couple of other statements coming um, about whether or not mm -hmm. it'll be on Steam or it'll be on Epic Games or it'll be on both. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very unclear. Even in the ones that they did clarify later in the day, mm -hmm. it was basically like, uh, we don't have any plans to move it right now, well, it yeah. was kind of a will they, won't they. So there's a lot of positives and there's a lot of negatives that we kind of need to sort through, yeah. but that's how it is with most announcements. It's, well, it sounds like uh, the, the plans, just with the ambiguity in, in their posts, is that the plans are to move it over to EGS, but Sonics did come up with a statement saying that they will continue supporting the game on Steam f forever. Like, mm. they didn't say they're going to stop. So DLC and, and all that stuff is still going to be supported. You'll still get updates and patches. Um, but beyond that, uh, you know, there's uh, you know there's a lot of positives with it, too. I mean, you know, the, there's a lot of money behind Epic. They yeah, have a lot just, of money, by the way. Just a small, <laughs> tiny little bit amount of money. Yeah, they probably have and, a separate building with just money yeah, in and it. And they have been investing a lot of money into Fortnite, personally, as a company, not just coming mm -hmm. from, like, other sources, but Epic themselves have been putting a lot of money towards yeah. Fortnite. Esports, which potentially bodes well for Rocket League. So, could League you esports. see this being uh, a good sign or a pump up for the Rocket League esports scene, or is nothing going to change? I mean, in combination with the esports store, I think that this could potentially be a positive sign, especially if, if Epic, for example, is liking what the community is driving mm -hmm. in terms of the revenue side of the esports model, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, if Epic isn't feeling it, then maybe probably things will stay the same. But that's one of the, the kind of the best and worst things about this announcement is that there's just a lot of unknown, yeah. right? We don't know how things are going to play out. It literally, They were literally acquired probably maybe like a couple months ago, and we're just hearing about it now. Yeah. But they haven't had any impact on the plans yet. And while there is some negatives to consider, like if it, if it moves off Steam, mm -hmm. the workshop is going to be gone, that's right? True. Theoretically, and a lot of people make custom games 
modes or like custom maps. Or left and mirrors whole YouTube channel. Exactly. Based so that. It, there's are there are negatives to consider, but I'm I'm with Greg and I think there's a lot of positives here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a wait and see game. And I, I think that if you're cautiously optimistic about this, there's there's gonna be a lot to like. So so for all the people freaking out, what's your TLDR to them right now? Just wait. I mean, <laughs> really? I mean, it, it's, it's really that simple. There's, there's so much, so many variables, and this is big business, right? And big yeah. business doesn't happen overnight. And us making judgments about stuff that we really yeah. don't know that much about, or you know, how, what the epic, honest conversations mm -hmm. have been like, we have no mm -hmm. idea. That's fair. But that's it. We're done. Uh, thank you, Nick, for for uh, joining me to talk to Achieves, and thank you, people at home. Tomorrow we've got Marissa and Zurich revving their chainsaw guns. As, Lancers, well, I know that. As they'll be talking Gears of War. Till then, check out our social. That's Squad State, or don't. I'm not your boss, but do. See ya.